Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet and today I'm in the space site at the foot of the Ben Rinners and I'm here at the Glen Alaki distillery. So the Glen Alaki distillery is not a well-known distillery but it is now opening to the public and releasing their whiskey. They're not really opening to the public as in you can visit them but um, they will be on the open market and have a core range of whiskies to be sold. So what's behind Glenallachy? Glenallachy was founded in 1967 and first distilled in 1968 so there is quite some heritage there. Unfortunately they got mothballed in 85 but then got bought by Pernod Ricard in 1989 and mostly their uh, whiskey was used within the blending industry so it was used in Panorica's shivers and other products. Um, it is not well known for the consumer but it is a well respected and very well known brand within the whiskey scotch blending industry. So uh, now uh, in 2017 the the distillery was bought by three Scotsmen and this is quite unusual because most of the distilleries are now owned by international companies and investors, investor groups, but this is now an, one of the few distilleries that is independently owned by Scottish people, ma uh, managed by Scottish people and this is what it's all about at Glenallachie. The first person we have here is Billy Walker. He is a uh, 40 years within the industry, he was at Glendronach and at Benriach, so he has quite some experience. Second person I'm going to have an interview today is Graham Stevenson. He is 30 years within the business and he used to work for Inverhouse, so also a lot of experience there. And the last person, the kind of the organizer behind that, is Trish Savage. She has been working for Benriach as well. She has been 30 years in the industry. So if you look at the, the big picture, we have three enthusiasts making whiskey for the enthusiasts and they have 100 years of experience. So it's, it's quite amazing. And today we're gonna find out what this whiskey distillery is all about. We start off with the ingredients. We have an old malt mill, a two roller malt mill from the Prometheus company. And the company actually went bankrupt the year after. So this is one of the last malt mills they ever produced. After this, it has been down, uh, grinded down to grist and checked for quality. It ends up here in the 10 ton mash ton. And the distillery wants to produce about 800,000 liters a year. So a 10 ton mash ton is far too big for this distillery. But as the distillery was producing 4 million liters before, they just said, oh, we want to keep that process because the process is really good and efficient and produces good quality. So they said we keep it, but we go down from 18 mashings down to four mashings. Yeah, so um, also what is very special is they don't do the usual two plus one mashing. They do uh, two plus two. So they have four washings. The first and the second end up in the wash bags and the third and the fourth are recycled and used in the next batch for the first and the second washing. So um, the last thing is that here at Glen Alaki you also have a bit of um, environmentalism and a bit of energy conservation. So the excess heat from the distillation is not wasted but they actually use it to boil up the water here to the first washing of 65 degrees and the fourth washing of 95 degrees. You can't use all the energy, you still have to use a bit of steam, but uh, the ethos behind that is that they don't want to waste any energy and just conserve as much as possible. So after the mashing, it's off to the fermentation in the wash bags. So the fermentation here is also quite huge. Um, what this allows the distillery is that they have these six wash bags and they use only four of them at a time. So they do have a bit of room for expansion. What is also very interesting about the Glen Allerkey distillery is that they have a very, very, very long fermentation duration. So they have about 160 hours 
I'm, I'm not sure if I've seen any distillery that has such a long fermentation duration. So the yeast really has some time to produce uh, these easters and these different uh, products of flavor. So um, the other thing is also if you have such a long duration, the yeast is uh, definitely able to finish the job. So the, the consistency of the product after the fermentation, the wash, is pretty, pretty constant. So, and the other point about long fermentation is that you also get a really, really good yield. So, the yield here is about 9.5% ABV, which is really, really high. So, um, the fermenters are filled at about 42.5 thousand liters, then fermented uh, during these 160 hours, as mentioned, and then we go off to the wash still. So after the stuff from the wash bags is coming into this room, it is ending up in the wash charger. The wash charger uh, is filled up with about 42,000 liters and is then evenly distributed to the wash stills, uh, which are filled to about 21,000 and a bit. And the wash stills and spirit stills are pretty wide with the constriction piece which is uh, increasing the reflux, therefore increasing the um, amount of uh, vapors touching the copper and then getting um, catalytic reactions to get a really smooth distillate. But um, the, the wash is really a fruity stuff. Um, the distillation is not gone into full smoothness, but they actually try to get more of a a complex spirit and a bit more of that uh, heavier notes and a bit more intensity into the spirit as well. So they're not looking at uh, a very easy smooth distillate but also more it's, it's more going into the direction of a bit more intenseness. So um, after the wash still has distillated the, uh, the wash it comes into the condensers and here the, the, the distillery is very special. They don't have the normal condensers that are vertical, but they do have flat, uh, horizontal condensers. The distillery is not quite sure about that, why they, it was built this way, but they have two theories. The first theory is that back in the days, they wanted to buy these expensive pumps, so they just uh, condensed the liquid at the very top floor, so it can flow down into the, the spirit still or into other chargers. And uh, the second theory is that the, the horizontal condenser is more, uh, it's more slowly condensing the liquids, so there is more uh, contact from the vapor with the copper inside the condenser, which has a positive influence on the spirit. Yeah, so much to the condensers. And when the stuff then enters the spirit still, it is down to about 14,000 liters. And here we see the distillery has a bit of a, a different um, measurement system how it comes to the cutting points. Because they don't 100% go with the ABVs, they, uh, have, uh, they go by volume. They say we have this amount of uh, distillate and then they say, uh, we take a certain volume, which is the four shots, and then they go into the middle cut, and the, the paints and the, the stuff that is left behind is um, done also by ABV in the end. So the, the middle cut is a bit differently defined as in other distilleries, but it works out pretty well. And from the ABVs that the distillery has measured, it is pretty normal what we can see so it's coming about somewhere around 70% ABV so um, after that is finished then we go off to the new bottling uh, the new cask filling site so I'm now here at the filling station and um, the filling station hasn't been uh, here before so it, as it doesn't it didn't exist this here is all brand new equipment 
and it is now stored in these tanks behind me and then filled into the casks. The casks here are, have a great vari variation. You have bourbon casks, you have sherry casks, you have port casks, mozzanilla cask, madeira. And it's not just the different type of wood and predecessor liquid in the cask, but they also do a bit of variation with sizes. They do have quarter casks, they do have American Standard barrels, also uh, a few sizes in between and for sure the big butts from uh, Spain and Portugal. Um, they fill their casks with 63% um, ABV and what they also look at at the cask is that the cask is fresh. So they don't use casks for a third and fourth time because they think you, you have to be, have the, the quality of the wood to produce a good quality of spirit. So only first and second fill go into the warehouse where we will go to next. So now I come to the favorite part of the distillery tour and that is the warehouse. And here you can just smell the, the whiskey maturing. That is always mm, such, a, such a nice feeling. And I'm standing here in one of the Dunwich warehouses. The distillery has 16 warehouses, quite a huge number. Um, they converted a few of them into Dunwich warehouses. And I'm standing right in one of them. This here is all the spirit from the distillery and it is maturing in many many different casks. It's this year for example is uh, was bourbon cask matured and then uh, refilled into this big big um, port pipe. Uh, behind me we have Madeira casks, we have PX casks and a lot of different variations. So what we're looking in the future is uh, some very interesting bottlings coming out. Um, what the distillery is uh, doing here as a philosophy wise is they don't want to be marketing driven that's say and say oh the customers want this and that so we better fill something like that. Uh, no, they, they want to be more production driven. They, they are now um, in the very big task of finding out uh, how good all their stuff is. So they have to do a lot of sampling. So they are sampling, sampling and finding out, okay, this stuff is uh, this far and this stuff is this far. Are we gonna rebarrel that? Uh, fill into different casks and uh, at some point they're going to find out when to release that stuff but that is really up to uh, the production and the maturity of the whiskey and not the demand from the market. So um, yeah that was it with the production and now we're going into an interview and getting to know the core range that is about to be released in a few days. Okay, this was the production and now we're in an interview with uh, Graham Stevenson. So you have 30 years of experience, you were uh, working for Inverhouse, so quite some knowledge there. So thank you very much for having us. Well, thanks for coming. It's been a pleasure to show you around the site and see what we've acquired. Yeah, nice. So um, the core range. You're quite a new distillery for us. We, we haven't had you in our portfolio and now we're looking at the range and uh, everything is turning into no age statement and I'm looking here and I uh, see a lot of numbers on the bottle. How yep. come? Yeah, well we firmly believe in age statements. When we've managed to acquire along with the distillery uh, a wide range of uh, stocks maturing over a very large number of years so we, we can, we can uh, offer age statements. Uh, and really authentic products for all our consumers. Mm -hmm. So um, I've seen uh, you have a cask strength, you fill it 46% ABV, so this is quite, uh, quite high. Yeah, yep. again um, we've decided to differentiate ourselves by um, filling everything at 46 or above um, and again non-chill filtered, non-natural color, um, offering the consumer an absolutely authentic product. Where Absolutely, um, looking for top quality products. Top quality products. So um, um, if, if I look at this, then I'm probably going to imagine that all the whiskey malt heads, they, they're going to love this stuff. I certainly hope so. Okay, so um, where are we heading off? I think we start with the 12 year old. 12 year old, okay. Yeah. yeah. 12 year old, uh, what was it, 46% ABV? This is 46% ABV. It's been matured initially in uh, first fill bourbons mm -hmm. and then uh, re-racked into a mix of 
uh, PX, Oloroso, um, and Virgin Oak. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, here we have. I can already smell it. it. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Like that. A bit more body than your average space side. Mm-hmm. Mm. Definitely. Quite a lot of influence from the from the, um, the virgin oak and the uh, yeah. and the, mm. the bourbon. It starts mm. off for me. It starts off with um, sweetness, mm-hmm. with caramel, with mm-hmm. vanilla. Bit of vanilla. But as soon as you swallow, you you see a bit of a, a spiciness going on. Mm-hmm. A bit of a uh, as you mentioned, that, that body with the bit more body tenseness, what what I'll say, mm, um, more of that uh, you, uh, of a wood influence, I would say. And it's, it's a bit of a oakiness is going on. Mm, I like it. Good. Hmm. 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 So um, you have thirty years of experience, but um, you're not alone in this. <laughs> And I've read here that truly independent, 100% Scottish. Um, you're working with uh, Trish and Billy. Yep. Uh, so um, how did that form and, and how is it to work in a Scottish company? Well, I think it, <coughs> it all just fell into place uh, very neatly um, um, about uh, a year and a half ago. Um, we've been uh, working together in the industry for, for many years. Mm-hmm. Um, and Billy had sold out uh, his previous company uh, and we were all getting to a point where maybe we would be thinking about retiring but uh, <laughs> having had such a, such a wonderful career in the, in the industry we really wanted to try and find something else to do in the industry um, and we all had a passion for, for being remaining in the industry so we decided to get together and try and find something to acquire um, and uh, Glen Allachie fitted the bill perfectly so essentially we want to be masters of our own destiny, escape any of the bureaucracy of large companies or anything like that and be able to make our own decisions uh, and above all have fun in what is just a terrific industry. Nice. So, so there's a choice between I can go retire or can, I can just buy a whiskey just to... <laughs> That's a cool story. That is a cool story. <laughs> nice. So very, very cool. So. Next up, 18 year old. Next up, the 18 year old. Mm-hmm. Thanks. There we go. Again, um, this is uh, again at 46%. Mm-hmm. Um, again, matured largely in uh, first fill bourbon barrels. Mm-hmm. And then um, this time uh, into PX and all are also. Um, so a bit more influence from the, from the Spanish oak. Yeah, it's a bit, bit deeper. Mm-hmm. Dried fruit, but also mm-hmm. like a bit more caramel, chocolatey. Mm. Mm. Nice. Mm. 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 <laughs> what are you getting there? Mm. It's definitely. I would say when you say on the chocolatey side, I I find it to be more on the bittersweet chocolate, mm-hmm. the bit of a cacao flavor going on mm-hmm. it's a it's a bit of sweet whiskey mm. but the was it px pedro jimenez pedro jimenez yeah it's got a, a subtle sweetness but it's it's overwhelmed by by the age a bit of the wood flavor a bit of a, a bit of that chocolatey bit of sweet chocolatey and also quite a little bit of quite a a little bit of chili ketchup. Yeah, Pe- pepperiness. Yeah. Peppermint, yeah. yes, definitely mm-hmm. good. Oh, I like it, I like it. It's it's amazing that you... you I, I do a few, I did a few uh, visits to new distilleries, but when you come to a new distillery, like, mm, here's our new make. I'm like, mm, oh yeah, nice new make, but it's still new make. <laughs> <laughs> I had some of your new makes also, very nice, but still new make. <laughs> but um, now it's just, mm, 18 year old. <laughs> It's amazing for a new company. So, um, you've just bought the company, uh, was it like six months ago or something? Um, like that? October, October, October. 
2017 last yeah. year. So um, we took the keys. And what are you planning now? You, you've done <coughs> okay. some bottling line and some rearrangement. What's the plan for the future? Well, <coughs> um, at the moment, obviously, we've got the core range, which will come to market very shortly. Um, so that's that, that's the initial um, focus will be on, on establishing the brand and the core range. We've um, since we bought the story, we've also been doing a lot of sampling of the stocks that we've mm -hmm. acquired. We've bought in uh, a lot of specialist wood, mm -hmm. um, uh, as we've talked about, um, a, a wide range of them, as you've seen in the, earlier on in the video. So a lot of the activities in um, re-racking some of the spirit that we've bought, and that's going to set us up for the future for uh, adding some interesting uh, line extensions and, uh, to the range, whether they be specialist bottlings, um, or um, um, limited releases, possibly a few single casks, um, that sort of thing. Um, as far as the distillery is concerned, we're, we're um, spending quite a lot of money in, in just um, generally um, tarting it up, but we also have a plan to hopefully put in a small bottling operation to bottle single casks on site. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we're looking to add a visitor experience um, so we'll be looking to, to do that fairly soon um, and develop a small visitor experience, not trying to take on the big guys in the space side area, but, um, but uh, that's, that's the immediate future. Okay, so keep that posted. If uh, I'm doing the whiskey news, then I will keep you posted when the visitor center is you open, do that. So, so you can plan your trip to come, Scotland come accordingly. Yes. So, okay. So, um, 18 year old, 25 year old. Now, now we get into the really good stuff. Yeah. So, here we go. Mm, so, um, again, it's, now it's this is bottled at 48. 48, even? Yes. Oh, slightly, nice. Slightly stronger. And this is an interesting. This is a lot of dried fruit. Mm. And then, mm. don't know, begin to get some of the, like uh, the older space sites, a bit more of the tropical fruits. Mm -hmm. Pineapple, mango, anything like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Very rounded, very soft. Mm. And as you said, um, tropical, it's it's a lot of fruit in there. Yep. A lot of fruit. I would say kind of that cherry, dried fruit, also a bit of fresh fruit, a bit of tropical fruit. Mm. So it's a good fruit punch. It has <laughs> <laughs> quite some kick behind good. it. Um, delighted to like it. Mm -hmm. mm. So um, I'm seeing everything is uh, unpeated. Yes. Um, have you ever thought about uh, peated malt? Yes, yes. We, mm -hmm. we have obviously uh, everything we've acquired with the distillery is, is unpeated. The distillery hasn't produced peated mm -hmm. um, variety as yet, but um, <coughs> we have uh, very recently just completed a small run of, of uh, uh, mashing um, heavily peated malt. Mm -hmm. So um, that uh, has been successful. We've maybe done about, we'll have done about 10% of our production in. in using peated malt this year and we'll, we'll continue that in future years. Um, <coughs> so you will find in, in some time in the future there will be a, a peated version of the, the single malt produced. Mm -hmm. We're going for a very highly peated malt, very phenolic mm -hmm. uh, contents, as high as we can get it. So that's what we're looking as at. As high as you can get it, okay. Yeah. So, so what, what number are you looking at? Like uh, well, 50, 60? 80, I think is the... 80? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's got to be... So it's gonna be uh, uh, a fun yeah, thing. It's, 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 uh, it's amazing how you, you set yourself up to be a bit different. So mm -hmm. 80 is gonna be it's gonna be a tough one. <laughs> it's gonna be a tough one. So yeah. but mm, I really I really like the spirit. So the last one, the youngest one. The youngest one, yes. This is a ten year old car strength. So this is a fifty seven percent, fifty seven point one. Fifty seven point one. It says batch one, so batch one. Yep. <coughs> So in doing this, we, uh, we obviously select a certain number of uh, casks and batch them up to get the cask strength. So uh, each batch will, could have a slightly different strength and a different character. So <clears throat> this is a limited edition. 
Mm -hmm. There's about um, uh, 2,000 or 12,000 bottles, mm -hmm. 2,000 six pack cases okay. um, uh, available this year. Um, and then batch two will come shortly thereafter. Um, so this again, is this is principally mm -hmm. uh, bourbon cast and, and quite a strong influence from the virgin oak in, in this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, also some virgin oak as well. Yeah. Mm. So mm. again, quite a lot of um, influence from the, the bourbon. Mm -hmm. Quite vanilla, quite sweet. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Mm. It's it's intense. It's uh, quite different. I don't want to say young because no, <laughs> they're all so old. old. Now, yeah. If we look at now, I say when whiskey is a completely different but compared to the others it's it's much more additive maturation you have the flavors really packed I into it with the, the cask strength and everything yeah. mm. I like it I like it but wow. yeah it's sweet it's pretty sweet <laughs> mm. Mm. I like it mm. Mm. good nice glasses so yep. Glenn I like she and I, and I love the plate, so yeah. uh, what's that all about? All right, well, um, we, we did the research and found that um, uh, Glenarchy is, is um, a Gaelic for the, the um, Valley of the Rocks. So mm -hmm. we were looking to uh, use the um, stone and rock as our, our theme, if you like, and that's sort of packaging, and they're all variations on various types of um, rocks around the, the area. And then we commissioned a um, a special specialist um, stonemason artist to specifically design um, the the branding and the um, the font for the uh, for the the, the name Glenallachy and um, he has engraved it in this piece of slate here mm -hmm. uh, and that's been lifted to to be transposed onto the packaging. Yeah, I like I like the packaging. You got the yeah. you got the color coded so and you got the texture on it and yeah. the, the engraving on it. Oh, it's cool. And and Billy Walker's signature. Billy's signature. Oh, that's yes. cool. cool. Yeah. Everything you want from a package. <laughs> oh, cool, cool, Good. cool stuff. So, but I've heard that you didn't just acquire the distillery. You you also bought some no, some other right. brands. Yeah. Um, along with the the distillery and the, and the stocks, we bought two small. Uh, Brand, uh, brands of blended Scotch whiskey, mm -hmm. uh, McNair's and White Hiller, mm -hmm. which had been reasonable brands way back in the sort of seventies, eighties, mm -hmm. <coughs> but um, had since um, been allowed to um, not not to die off, but to, to diminish, and they were, they were very unimportant in the um, portfolio. So we've we've acquired them, and now we plan uh, in due course to relaunch them um, in the premium blended sector. Mm -hmm. With McNair's, that will be the one first to come to market, and initially that will be um, a range of um, blended malts, but heavily peated. Mm -hmm. um, we've managed to, through our connections in the industry, we've sourced some lovely um, aged peated malt. Mm -hmm. So again, we can add some age statements to the McNair's, so there will be a, a range of heavily peated blended malts under the McNair's banner coming out uh, reasonably shortly before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Then on the White Heather, we're just at the very early stages of looking at what we're going to do with that. But, um, initially, we're looking to, to um, produce it at the super premium um, level with a 21-year-old age statement initially. Um, obviously, it'll be a relatively small volume, uh, and then we'll, we'll work out where we're going to take them from there. We do see blends as a, an interesting area and a, and a category that uh, is, is perhaps undervalued, and, and there's certainly opportunities in Okay, yeah. You you got to email me that when, when that comes I'm out. Sure so, uh, also, keep posted if you want to know more about that. Watch the whiskey.com news or whiskey.de news mm. here in Germany. Um, I will keep you posted on that. So, quite a range. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you Thanks for, for showing me around. Thank you it very much for coming. It was a pleasure. It was really interesting. And it's just, it's great it's just a... It's just a uh, a certain point of time and you just got a nice distillery with age statement whiskeys up it's, it's really interesting so thank you very much for watching if you found this video interesting then please feel free to share it with your friends